yeah, when you hit the last uh, bridge. From there on, it's just one loose corner to the finish line, but it's hard to overtake people there. So for Bruce Mouse in this one, he'd be the man to watch, fourth in points at the moment. The number four plate, there he is, that big dude on the inside. Just looks like he's uh, gauging the pace there in second spot at the moment, right where he needs to be. Treyu there from France. Number 13 play on his bike. Hansen, number 20, and Cartfjord in number 29. But now it's Philip Byers out front. Excuse me, Fabrice. Fabrice Mel's Excuse from Belgium, me. yeah, Fabrice. He won the Fall Nord, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. I'm getting confused. But uh, Fabrice, yeah, he's very powerful as well, also a good cross country rider. But he's a specialist uh, for the eliminator. Unbelievably strong on that climb, Bart. There, Mouse. Look yeah, at the power you, you, of you saw the Norwegian rider uh, um try to do a tactic race, a really fast start, watching over his shoulder to the other riders. But uh, as we already said, the first climb it's so hard, physically so hard. It's uh, yeah, the cross country, yeah, what you need for for, for this climb. But still, he is on the second position and uh, good skills as well for him. Oh. Well, the front end was high there on the number 13 by Catreyu over that step up, but it worked for him, he got over it. But, uh, yeah, Fabrice Mao's unbelievable ride for him in Andorra, took that win there, riding out of Belgium as well. He's a big fella as well, Bart, but he produces, you know, like in cross country, sometimes being that big wouldn't climb that well, but he seems to have so much horsepower on that first yeah, climb. It's, he has, it's he a, has a lot of horsepower, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, also, these riders, they do a lot of training and a lot of cross-country uh, specific training as well. Most of these riders, they will participate also on the Saturday race. So, a some small uh, mistake jostling going on there, the Frenchman getting bumped back Saturday, there, Bart. Yeah, I don't know what happened over there. I don't know if they came together on that climb there. But it's still... Uh, yeah, it's Carfjord in second, yeah. So, Norwegian having a good ride. Oh, oh. Another mistake. So that's his night over, Treyu going out. Yeah, pretty technical down through that wood, though. Oh, my word, that was close uh, to... Uh, whoa, oh, yeah, he has oh. gone down. Well, that was a big... It looked like it was going to be a lot bigger than that. I think it, I think I'd be pretty happy that I crashed down there on the flat. He's twisted that front end on his bike. Mouse and Cartford go through, but we thought that last descent would cause problems, Bart, didn't we? I don't know, yeah, what, what went wrong already. I think it's happened already in the, in the steep descent yeah. just before the bridge and after the bridge. The, 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 there's a, a lot of loose grind. It's on, on the, oh. in this corner. And if you make a mistake already in front of it, it's hard to uh, yeah, correct it. Oh, he went down pretty hard there. Yeah, I think, he almost, I think he just landed flat off that bridge. He was carrying a lot of speed from off the... Uh, well, it was a do or die move and, and he died. Sebastian Cartford, Fabrice Mouse go through to the quarterfinals then. As we go back to the line for the next round, Soto, Andy Eyring, Christensen. They are very, uh, all, all strong riders immediately. Yeah, they really are. This is a big lineup. Look at that. Mel, Soto, Eyring, Cartfjord there. So, fourth and fifth fastest qualifiers in this one. Fabrice Mel's with a win under his belt already this season. But uh, it's Cartford looking around, dictating the pace from the start bar as they go now. Yeah, the fastest start all, all, all the time, but uh, still, he, there's a big climb for him to come off. And uh, if he can survive it, that, uh, then, it's, then he's in a good position. But uh, as you can see there, he has again, Fabrice Mels, Belgian champion eliminator. Fabrice Mels has got some power, hasn't he? Look at him go, Bart. Yeah, he knows exactly what he has to do. Uh, to be on the first position here at the top of the climb, even Soto, a good specialist in the cross-country race is, uh, is struggling with uh, Fabrice Mels, a very powerful Belgian rider. Big gap opened up, but the top of this climb then, unbelievable from him. So Soto unable really to match him there. He's done enough though to stay in second place. And the fast staying car forward there, well, he looks like he's paying the price already. As Andy Ehring now starts to make his way towards the front of the pack. So Soto over the jump safely. Mouse pulling up for that big step up. Big gap though, Bart. Yeah, this big one. gaps. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mouse looking like he's got a lot of power to spare tonight. He looks dangerous to me. Yeah, Bruce Mouse. He was kicked out in the semi-finals of the World Championships uh, two weeks ago, and he was really pissed of that because he was one of the favourites. Yeah. He won the uh, uh, Val Nord World Cup. Fourth in Val de Sol as well, where he made the final as well. 
So yeah, one of the favorites all the time. And uh, especially I think this course today, it, it will suit him really well together with uh, Daniel Federspiel. Yeah, he's done the hard work now. If he can just get down through this wood safely, he's going to be home and dry. And book himself a place. And also the material uh, has to be uh, yeah, strong as well, especially I think the chain, uh, it, it can drop off easily, especially here in this descent. And if, if you lost your, ta your oh. chain after this, just before the finish line, uh, yeah, that will be set. If you're under pressure, it'll certainly be over, yeah. So both of them locked in there for that possibly safer line over on the left. As Maus is going to take this one easily. I'm liking his bar grip. Look at his grips. Belgium, Belgium grips. grips. Nice. <laughs> nice colours. Maus takes it then, followed by Soto and the A-ring there out in third place for him. So. Yeah, Andy Aaron just not having the pace to run with them top two tonight, but... And Mao's up and over that big step up safely. So they've made it. Belgium, Argentina. <laughs> we go back now. Core final number three. Giga is being cautious through those jumps because she managed to break one of her teeth on them earlier. And we're now going back. For the men, for the semi-final. Semi-final number one. Van Gelen, Fabrice Maus, Soto and Stijbjörn and in the heat two, Gigenheimer, the World Cup 2013 champion, Daniel Federspiel, Kenna Gallagher and Patrick Luthier. Cut a real good semis, eh, but Yeah, all good, all strong, man. And uh, definitely uh, two very strong heats as well. And uh, yeah, the men, they have so much speed. Simon Stijbjörn there, team balls. Next to him, Fabrice Maus, Sakano Alanya, the team. Big fella, Fabrice Maus, doesn't seem to be lacking any power up that climb. Matthias Rengelen there from Sweden, number one qualifier, but big night for him. And in lane four, Andreas Catrillo Soto, all the way from Argentina. Great to see someone from South America here. Yeah, he had a really good race in uh, Val di Sole. And uh, yeah, he's on fire for the eliminator races, so that's good to see him. Yeah, hard out the gate then as well. Yeah, Soto first, Fabrice Mel second, Wengeling third, and Stipjan fourth position on this point. But Wengeling now he moves up to the first position. Big lad as well, and he's strong on this climb. It looks like sat down, just turning those pedals, but that takes some power. Not standing up, like you say, you know, you're not going to wheel spin when you sat down, but it looked like he was trying to maybe perhaps save a little bit. Starting to grit his teeth now. Maus, so big strong inside. Pick. Second place, fighting, fighting for the second place together with Wengeling. Is it an advantage even on a climb like that to be smaller and lighter for a climb? Did yeah, big definitely, dude suffer? it helps, it helps, but you need, you need the power. You're a big fella and you won Olympic champion, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but yeah, it is, yeah. how tall are you? Uh, 186, so... Yeah, it's uh, big for the climbs, eh? It is, yeah, 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 yeah. Power to weight ratio is everything when it comes to climbing, I guess. It is, definitely, but uh, for Reese Mel, she had really strong heats before, but now you all, they're almost three in a row. Oh, Van Gelen now over that big jump there. That full suspension bike perhaps just uh, it, helping him a little bit. Definitely here it helps him over the big uh, holes in this grass section. So but uh, for Reese Mel, she already was complaining about he has to do so many heats today. Uh, especially, with, oh, oh, mistake of so Van here in this rock mistake. section. Well, we knew how difficult that was. He's been lucky, though, but he's uh, re the second for spot. Miles. So now it's Soto out front. Now Van Gelen under real pressure from Fabrice Maus, yeah. Maus has got to attack on this climb, surely. Van he has the fastest time, Here so he, comes. He, he knows, but oh, 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 oh. He oh. uses his body. Squeezing there, oh, squeezing Maus out. Well, Van Gelen a little bit naughty, perhaps, but it worked. You can see their body language. They're very exhausted here at the top of the of the, of the top of the, the course, actually, the last descent, and they're oh, making mistakes. Oh, where's Mouse gone? Because of oh, they're Mouse so tired. It's, it's it, exactly that's why you see him. Yeah, they're so there. tired. Oh, Whoa. Van Gelen down the right hand side. So he truly is a speed a Swede with speed there. Flat out down that straight line in that big descent down onto that bridge. 
and taking the win of that semi-final. Yeah, but definitely sort of he didn't expect Wengeling uh, coming inside. No. Because he was watching over his shoulders. There is there another one coming. Absolutely. But, uh, it was not. Well, great ride from him there. <laughs> yeah, Mr. from Fabrice Mels, he already was complaining what I uh, thought about uh, so many heats he has to do with the length of the eliminator course uh, a little bit above two minutes yeah and here the mistake of wangling here in this rocky section and then to continue your speed again that's that's very hard yeah a lot of desire from him so to come too, back and to win now. is coming here inside line very fast definitely a faster line but of course it gives you a and then it's the men's small final simon stebian in gate one, next to him, Fabrice Maus. Watch out for him on that first climb. Kenneth Gallagher back on the line then for the small final. Superior Brenchins, man and bike team. The boss man sat right next to me. And Patrick Luthy there on the outside. Some big names in this small final, Bart. Yeah, but most of them, they are very uh, exhausted already. Uh, we saw it in the previous heat, uh, Fabrice Meltz, he was dominating actually every heat, but the previous heat, it was a little bit too much for him. And uh, we will see right now how it goes on. Another climb for them. So, Meltz fourth overall in points, Kenneth Gallagher in fifth. And he actually seven points off him, so you could see Kenno, if he has a great ride here, he might be able to move up in the overall standings as well. Yeah, for Fabrice Mels, the GC standing is definitely one of his goals for today. He can be on the podium. Uh, on the right-hand side there, Fabrice Mels, the number four play on the front of his bike. Again, Kenna just struggling a little bit on that climb, but more in touch this time than perhaps in other heat parts. So, yeah, uh, we've seen uh, this section uh, before of Kent, and this, this suits him really well. If he can stay in the wheel with uh, Stipion for a while, I think he's able to overtake him. Yeah, there you go. He's right but where Fabrice, he needs to be the in gap third to Fabrice, place. It's a little bit too much, maybe. But still, you can see on his ex expression on his face as well, very exhausted, very tired. Grit in his teeth. Kenneth Gallagher, this is the last time he'll have to do it tonight. That must be uh, quite a nice feeling. Patrick Luthi then miles off at the back at the moment. And Kenta, now he moves. Oh, more! Oh, more elbows. He's having no luck with the elbows tonight. What's up with everyone? Yeah, no, he has a little bit more luck than, than the previous heat did to get a bit... Give the man some space. Yeah, it is. They're too wide. <laughs> the handlebars are too wide. You're going to have to start making him run narrow bars and bar ends. <laughs> that'll, that'll get him out of the way. Draw bars like the roads. <laughs> yeah, he can't catch those on anything. So Mel's just stretching those legs as he comes down in this. The last descent of it, last ascent, excuse me. Of his even as he turns left for this climb, and Gallagher's and in a great position here. a small here. climb coming up. Gallagher, has he got Kenta. the power? Can he do it? He's on the right side of the Mouse's bike for that turn at the top. Mouse responds, just holding Kenta Gallagher back. Kenta knows a few good lines over here. Gallagher looks like he's hurting as well, but... Jumps. Oh! oh. Skills from that man. Speed. That was the last place Whoa. he wanted to come to a complete Another halt. mistake of Fabrice in front of him. So... Gallagher opting to follow him, not taking that right-hand line. Both the same line. And it's going to be a sprint finish, I think, if either of them have got any power left at all. Gallagher Kenta, goes again, home. Again. Gallagher's out sprinting him. Gallagher takes the small final. An amazing result from him. Well, fifth on the night to Kenna Gallagher. And Fabrice Maus just didn't have anything left there. I really didn't think either of them had anything left for that, for that there. They were both looked exhausted as they came it on is, that yeah, finish straight back. It is, it is. You see here the speed of Kenta. He, he, Outside, he used his body weight, his elbow against with Stipian, and he lost uh, the, the speed actually. And then he's not able to jump over these uh, over these double jump. So that, that's the reason why he rolls over. But here, just in about 50 meters, he overtake. <laughs> yeah, right, Mouth. right from Kenneth Gallagher. He's delighted with that. I can't blame him. Awesome. Yeah, it, it must give him a lot of confidence. Actually, he's very strong, but young, and he needs a little bit more of experience. But yeah. he almost.